everybody, welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, this evening we're gonna get started on preparing our other big garden for planting. You can see it behind here. We've taken out all the weeds on the area here that has the woven weed fabric. And behind it there is an area that we are going to be tilling. This garden here, we're gonna be growing watermelon and sweet corn, and we're so excited about it. Those are actually the only two things we're gonna be planting in this entire garden. Last year, this was the main garden that we grew for the summer. We're trying to rotate where we plant things every year. So this year, this is going to be only these two things, uh, watermelon and sweet corn. Earlier today, the girls helped us pull up half of the weed fabric. So that's the back half that you guys see over there. We're gonna till this up it's, it's about evening time right now. We're hoping to get this all tilled up so that tomorrow morning we can get out here early before it gets too warm and we can start planting. Even though last year we tilled this garden area and we would prefer to only till every other year, the back half, which is gonna be the sweet corn, it really does need to be tilled. Corn grows best in tilled soil so that's why we're gonna do that in the back half. We are so excited to grow sweet corn this year. This is the first time we've ever really been serious about growing sweet corn, and we're gonna grow quite a bit of sweet corn. In the past, we've had success growing popcorn, but the one time that we tried sweet corn, it really didn't go very well at all. So this year, we're gonna try our best. We're growing a nice big patch because I want to have a ton of sweet corn to try canning for the first time and maybe to put some in the freezer. I'm gonna jump on the tractor. We're gonna get this tilled up. And hopefully, we're gonna get this tilled up tonight, so first thing tomorrow morning, we're gonna start planting. back out it's the next morning I just went over the ground one more time with the tiller made it nice and smooth did it on a real fine setting so that everything is ready to start planting we didn't get out here quite as early as we would have liked to but that's what happens when you have a lot of animals to take care of and by the time we do all of our chores and eat breakfast and then get out here this is where we have to work is in the heat of the day so we're gonna hope to get this all done today we're just gonna try to plow through it because by the end of the week now they're actually saying that it's supposed to be up in the low 90s, which means uh, today when it's only going to be about 75 is going to be great. There are a couple things that we need to do before we can actually start planting. We need to put the border of our woven weed fabric back so that we've got a nice place to hook up our uh, poultry netting to keep the varmints out. Uh, we also need to lay back down the watering system and make sure that the spacing is correct for the rows of the corn that we're going to be doing. Today we're actually going to be also testing out a, a cedar that we purchased. Uh, we actually bought it last year. We used it to plant our sunflowers last year, but so far that's the only thing we've ever used it for. It's the Earthway cedar. We picked it up on Amazon last year. Uh, we're excited to try that and see how it works for planting the corn. Uh, it may be a big flop or it may work great. We'll see. It was iffy with the sunflowers last year, so uh, we're hoping we can get it calibrated to work great. We'll show you guys that when we get to that step. But we need to get busy, so let's get started. Thank you. 
All right, we've got our border of the woven ground cover back down. Now this is where our electric netting will go. We use the electric netting all the way around the garden and that keeps most of the critters out uh, with corn. Uh, we're gonna have more of a problem, I think, with coons and things like that. So uh, we need to uh, make sure that we really keep those out. Now by using the weed fabric and then putting, what we do is we put the fence right down the middle of the fabric. That way we can mow around the fence and the grass and things aren't growing up onto the electric fence and making it not as effective. So it really works well to have this border around the garden. Next thing that we're going to do is put our drip system back into place. Uh, we use the drip tape irrigation. We just recently did a video where we showed very in-depth how to install it. So go back and watch that video if you want to learn more about how to install it. But drip tape is a great system to use. Uh, it uses very little water and it waters very effectively. So we're going to get that put back into place. We need a row every three feet for our corn and then we'll be ready to start planting. Now that the drip system is all installed, it's about time to start planting. I told you guys earlier that we were going to be trying out this uh, cedar that we purchased last year. Um, like I said, the only time we've ever used it so far was for some sunflowers that we planted last year, and it was it was okay. It did a, it did an okay job. We're hoping it'll do better with the corn. Now this is it's an Earthway cedar. We're in no way affiliated. We just ordered this on Amazon, so we thought we'd show it to you guys. So basically the way that this thing works is that you get a bunch of these little discs that uh, are for all different types of seeds. This one is specifically, it says sweet corn right on it, so that's what we're going to be using. But you can see there's all different discs and they have different size openings depending on what size seed you're going to use. This will just go into this little hopper here and lock into place like that. And then this is where you will fill up with your corn seed. You'll push this down the row. As, it, as you push it, this right here will make a little trench in the uh, ground. And then your seeds will drop into that little trench. And then this chain follows behind and it covers the seeds back up. You can adjust this uh, for your planting depth. And then basically as you push this thing, you push it around and this plate spins inside of the hopper and it picks up one seed at a time and drops them out and it just plants them as you walk down the row. We're going to test this out first just here on top of the uh, woven weed fabric so you guys can see the seed actually come out and then we'll get ready to actually start planting our corn. We ended up uh, now that we have the drip system down, we ended up with 16 rows of corn that we're going to be planting. So it's 16 50 foot rows. All right, let's put some corn seed in here and push it down this row and see how it works. You can see that it did a pretty good job. They're not completely evenly spaced, but not too bad. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I do notice that in a few spots it did drop two kernels. Now if both of those end up germinating, we just have to go back and thin them out, which isn't a big deal. So I think in general this will be a pretty good um, 
system if it works as well as it does up here once we get over into the actual soil. So uh, we're going to use it at least for the first row and see how it works out. So before I get started planting with the cedar, I just want to talk with you about something real quick because for the last three years, most of what we've grown, we've used this woven weed fabric and now you see half of a garden that's just bare dirt. Well, we decided for this very first time that we're really giving it a good shot to plant sweet corn to try it on bare ground. There are a couple things we know about growing sweet corn. The first one is that it really prefers and does better on tilled ground, so we've made sure to do that. The second thing is that corn really needs a lot of nutrients, a lot of fertilizer, specifically nitrogen. And we haven't figured out in our woven weed fabric system how to provide just the corn with the nutrients and the nitrogen that it needs without spreading it on top of the ground and then, you know, working it in. So for this very first time that we're growing sweet corn, that's what we're going to do. We're going to plant it in rows in just bare ground. If the weeds get too out of control, we'll use our hand tiller to take care of those, but it will allow us the opportunity to uh, give it fertilizer in a couple different times during its growth cycle and hopefully everything will be perfect. We may have just planted a huge headache. This may be a mistake. We'll see. The Missouri Ozarks has some pretty intense weeds. We're just going to have to do the best we can this year and see how it goes. So we're hoping that you learn along with us. So let's try out this cedar. I think it went well. I could watch um, at the base here while I was pushing to see the um, seeds drop and I think it went really well. If it did go really well, you guys, this is gonna be an awesome tool to have. Just in no time, we planted 16 50 foot rows of corn and uh, I think it's gonna be good. I'm excited to see the germination rate. Make sure you guys keep watching to see updates on that, but I'm really hopeful that, that it did a great job. Now we need to switch gears. We're going to be planting our watermelon seed and we're going to be doing it a little bit differently than we've ever done it before. Uh, earlier we showed you that we only tilled half of the garden so this half where the watermelons are going to go it isn't tilled. We do want to make sure that the the planting hole has soil that is nice and fluffy so we have a trick we're going to try this year for the first time ever so stick around we're going to get to that in just a second. So it's time to move on to watermelons. Now we're growing two varieties of watermelon this year. Uh, one is the same one that we did last year, which was so amazing for us. It's called strawberry. Both of these are heirloom varieties from Baker Creek. Uh, the strawberry last year, we only planted one row of them and we ended up with over 30 watermelons. So that's awesome. Uh, the biggest one was almost 30 pounds. Now the second one that we're going to try this year, we've never grown before, but it did come highly recommended and it's called Wilson's Sweet. Uh, it's a little bit smaller of a watermelon, about 20 pounds, and they're a round watermelon where these are a longer watermelon. So we'll see how that works out. The only thing I didn't like about these is that they do have a lot of seeds, but the flavor was amazing. So, uh, you know, sometimes you have to pick and choose. Uh, to me, the, the seed issue wasn't a big enough issue to not have us grow them again. I thought they were awesome. We're gonna get busy planting both of these and then this garden will be complete. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys that 
The sweet corn that we're growing, because we forgot to mention before, is peaches and cream. It's what most people in our area grow for sweet corn, and it's a variety that does really well here. So you might want to check that out for yourselves. Now the experiment that we're going to try with the watermelon this year, a little different way of planting. The reason we're doing it this way is because we're trying to come up with ways so that we don't have to take up the ground cover every year, maybe every other year. Uh, now this ground was tilled last year before we put the ground cover down. So we're going to try this this year to see if we can get away with not having to till every year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my auger on my drill. We showed you guys this in other videos. We're just going to drill a hole here where the watermelon seed is going to go. I'm going to drill about six inches down. And we're just going to leave it like that for now. And we're going to do this whole row. Watermelons we're planting every three feet. Okay, so this is our experiment. I'm gonna be using the holes that Kevin drilled out of here. I'm gonna add a nice handful of rabbit manure down in there for some nutrients. And then I'm going to fill the hole with a really nice, light, fluffy soil mixture. This is half seed starting mix and half compost. I already mixed it up. We're just gonna fill the hole with that nice soil And then we're gonna put our seed down in there. It will give the seed a really nice, moist, loose place to germinate and those new fresh roots will have a really great thing to start in. This row will be the strawberry, watermelons. So I just poked a hole down in there about, I don't know, an inch down in the ground. We're gonna put two, I'm gonna put two seeds in here just for maximum germination cover that up and we'll move on. We're gonna do all of the watermelon planting this way. I hope it works out. And if it does, I'll be using this method a ton in the future. The entire garden is planted. We've got the fence back up to keep all the wild animals out. And we are so excited. What's better than having sweet corn and watermelon in your summer garden? I just can't wait until they are ready to start harvesting. This is such a good job done, you guys. This project today took us about eight hours. We did stop for about 30 minutes for lunch, but we had a lot to accomplish and we did it and now it is done. It's such a great feeling. And now we can just start watching for those seeds to germinate. Tonight we'll, we'll hook up the drip irrigation system and get some water on all of these seeds once it cools down just a little bit. For our drip system here, we run it about two hours a week. So sometimes we split that up an hour, you know, a day, twice a week or on the time like tonight, we'll probably just run it for a couple hours tonight, really to get a good soak on the ground and to get these seeds germinating. We hope you guys have enjoyed coming along with us again today while we did some planting. We sure enjoy having your company and you guys have expressed to us that you really enjoy watching and knowing what we're planting to see if it works well for us. Maybe you can try it next year. I can't wait till we get to the eating time of garden season because that's my favorite time. I just can't wait. I can already taste those nice cold watermelons in the fridge. You guys, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button below if you're enjoying what you're seeing to make sure that you get notified of our videos. 
And as always, the best way to help us here on the homestead is to share our videos. Until next time, thanks for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.